I heard a story. I heard a story about a guy that uh, he went to to uh, the vegetable market over there off our airline. Turn all the mics off except for this one. That's better. Uh, and this guy was hungry. He hadn't eaten in a while, and he was walking around thinking about stealing some fruit there at the airline uh, food market. And at the time, they had sawdust all over the floors. And he was a Christian guy, but he was really hungry. And the Lord says, I want you to dance. He said, Lord, I'm hungry. I don't feel like dancing. The Lord says, dance. Say, so you just shuffle his foot. <laughs> the Lord says, No, I want you to dance. So he started dancing, and he looked down at his foot, and there was a $50 bill wow. laying underneath the sawdust. Been there for years. Praise God. <laughs> he reached down and picked it up and was able to go buy him some, some food. Isn't that good? You know, God God will tell us to do things, and if we'll just follow that, the blessings will come. Amen. If we don't allow fear to come into our, mm -hmm. into the thing. You know, fear is the very opposite of faith. Amen. Amen. Praise God. About four o'clock this morning, I was awake studying the Word. God showed me some stuff about faith that we need to we need to really pay attention to. You know, there's a big difference between faith and fear. Every time an angel showed up in the Bible, the angel said, fear not. Fear not. See, that fear paralyzes your faith. It, it will shut that faith down. And we, that's why the Scripture tells us to take every thought captive into the obedience of Christ. If you don't take that, that thought of fear out of your mind and take control of it, the Bible wouldn't tell us to do that unless it's possible. Do y'all agree to that? Yeah, amen. God wouldn't tell you to do do something that was just totally impossible for you to do. So everything that God says in the Word to do, we can do because He has given us the ability to do it. And so in verse in Luke 12 28 we're going to talk about faith we're going to talk about negative faith and, and positive faith amen Luke 12 28 Everybody there? Mm -hmm. If then God so clothes the grass, mm -hmm. which today is in the field and tomorrow is thrown into the oven, how much more will he clothe you of little faith? So many times we're worried about, what am I going to wear? <laughs> you know, I don't do that. But I know, I've heard people do that. <laughs> well, us women like to do that. <laughs> what am I going to wear? <laughs> that's not it's, faith. It's just a girl thing. <laughs> I, I believe that's uh, so faith. <laughs> Hallelujah. Here we go, Miss Rose. I'll never say that. I said, what am I going to wear today? <laughs> okay, if you turn over to Luke 
7. start off with verse 1. It says, Now when he concluded all his sayings, this, this is Jesus, in the hearing of the people, he entered Capernaum, and a certain centurion servant who, who was dear to him was sick and re ready to die. So when he heard about Jesus, he sent the elders of the Jews to help him. I mean, Jews to him pleading with him to come and heal his servant. And when they came to Jesus, they begged him earnestly, saying that the one for whom he should do this was deserving. For he loves our nation and has built us a synagogue. Then Jesus went with him, and when he was already not far from the house, the centurion friends to him, saying to him, saying to him, Lord, do not trouble yourself, for I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof. Therefore, I did not even think myself worthy to come to you, but say the word, and my servant will be healed. For I am a man also. For I am also a man placed under authority and have soldiers underneath me. And I say to one, go, and he goes, and I say to another, come, and he comes. And to my servant, do this, and he does it. When Jesus heard these things, he marveled at him and turned around and said to the crowd that followed him, I say to you, I have not found such great faith, not even in Israel. He understand the authority that Jesus was speaking. We need to understand that the, the Bible is the authority. The Word of God is the authority. Amen? Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. If we'll see the Word of God as, as the absolute authority of God and believe it and walk in it, we'll see the kind of miracles that we've all thought about, we've all read about in the Bible, about people being raised from the dead and all these things. But we haven't been doing it. We've been, we've been allowing fear to come in. And that fear, if you don't take that thought captive, it'll grip you so much it'll paralyze your faith where you won't be able to do anything. And that's the truth. I mean, you would just be totally paralyzed. We can't allow all the stuff that's going on all over this country and all over the world today to bring fear to us. I believe that we should have some understanding and some knowledge. I do believe that. But so we can pray. That's, that's the second part of it, is so we'll know how to pray. Amen? All right, where was I? Okay. 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 Go to Luke 3, I mean Luke 22, 31 and 32. You know, Jesus said a pretty, pretty hard thing for a person to hear. You know, hmm. 
in 31 it says and the Lord said Simon Simon indeed Satan has asked for you that he may sift you as wheat but I have prayed for you <laughs> that your faith should not fail when you have returned to me strengthen your brother he said I prayed for you that your faith will not fail. Jesus didn't say I prayed for you so that nothing, nothing would happen. He, he said I prayed for you so you'll be strong so you can encourage the brother. That's pretty powerful. You know, a lot of times we, we think that uh, if something comes happens to us and comes down it appears like uh, it might be from the devil when maybe it's well, maybe it's from God to make us strong to build our character to build strength into us now, I'm not talking about sickness now I'm talking about just things that happen in life Amen. Amen. Praise God. Okay, go over to Acts chapter 14. <clears throat> this was an interesting scripture to me. Uh, uh, <laughs> be uh Chapter 14, verse 17. Wait a minute. 14, 27, I'm sorry. Now when they had come, come and gathered the church together, they reported that all that God had done with them and that he had opened the door of faith to the Gentiles. God had opened the door of faith to the Gentiles. Amen? And how did He do that? Through the Word. The Word of God is where we get our faith from. It's not by our experiences. Our experiences can change. Look at uh, 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 Elijah. You know he he uh, you know they poured poured water around that that place and, and you know and he got he called fire down from heaven and burned everything up. You know and I think it was the next day he was running from Jezebel. He has survived. So that can that can change. <laughs> that can change pretty quick too. <coughs> you know when 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 uh, Jesus rebuked Peter, he said, "Get thee behind me." He said, right before that, he said, "You know, uh, how did that go? The 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 rock uh, upon this rock we should build a church. Upon this rock we we'll build this church." And and right after that, Jesus. Rebuke Peter. That's why we have to take every thought captive because our thoughts, I'm sure Ezekiel was full of, I mean, uh, Isaiah. Elijah. Elijah, thank you. I'm sure Elijah was full of fear because. Jezebel sent word that she was going to cut his head off, you know. He allowed that fear to grip him instead of walking in faith like he did the day before. It's a day by thing, day by day thing, every day. Thoughts come to you, and if they're not of God, if they're not of faith, 
guess what? They're not from God. God is always in faith. When you hear something, if it's not faith, it's not God. Amen? Praise God. I hope this is coming through like the Lord gave it to me. <laughs> ah, hallelujah. Okay, go over to Romans 5. Just uh, do one through five here. Therefore, having been justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom we also have access by faith into this grace in which we stand and rejoice in the hope of the glory of God. And not only that, but we also glory in tribulations knowing that tribulation produces perseverance and perseverance character and character hope now hope does not disappoint because the love of god has been poured out in our hearts by the holy spirit who was given to us you know um, when when tough things come at you Talk to God. Ask Him why. He'll tell you. <laughs> he will tell you. Could be for this scripture right here. Building building uh, perseverance in you. Building character. Building hope. You know, when, when, when things look like it's going really bad, and then God shows up. Doesn't that give your faith a boost? Yes, it does. When you see that it looks like nothing's going to happen, nothing's going to change, then all of a sudden you see a change. Just like Betty Jean was talking about Chris while ago. That day will come. That day will come. He will serve God with all of his heart. And he will not fire. turn back again. Fire. Amen. Fire Amen. We have to speak words of faith, encouraging one another in faith. Not say, oh, I don't know how this is going to work out, man. The world just going to pot, you know, it's just everything's going bad, you know. But that's not words of faith. Every, every word that we speak is either sin or is faith. Without, or with, without, without, I'm getting ahead of myself here. Uh, praise God. Okay, go over to uh, Romans 14, 23. The second part of this verse says, Whatever is not from faith is sin. <laughs> Our words can be. That's, that's why God's word said it, that uh, life and death are in the power of the tongue. We speak life over a situation. And two minutes later, we're speaking death over it. You know, in the book of James, it says, A double-minded man is unstable in all of his ways, and he'll not receive anything from God when you're having that double-mindedness. you got to be single-mindedness and walking in the faith of God to see the kind of miracles that's all through this Bible. We have to walk in faith. We can't allow Satan to, to whisper in our ear, 
and get us out of faith. See, that kind of stuff happened to Jesus too in the wilderness. He went out into the desert to be tempted by the devil. He was led by the Spirit of God to be tempted by the devil. So why do we sometimes think the devil won't come to us and try to tempt us? <laughs> he does it. But we have to be be aware of that and not, not let those things pull us away from our faith. The more rock steady in our faith, the more victories we're going to have. The more peace we're going to have. The more joy we're going to have. If we just spend that quality time with the Lord and reading the Word and praying and getting God's get into God's presence. That's when we work and get into that place where the scripture says nothing is impossible to them that believe. Nothing is impossible. Nothing covers a lot. It covers everything, don't it? We don't have to be fearful of the things that's going on. I believe that as Christians, if we walk in faith, it doesn't matter if tomorrow all the all the money is all of a sudden no longer any good. Our faith will see us through it because Amen. that's what happened to the 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 uh, the uh, Israelis in the in the wilderness, you know. They had to go by faith, you know, mm -hmm. waiting on that manna. They griped and complained about it. And God still took care of them. Amen. They didn't even their clothes didn't even wear out. Their shoes didn't wear out. They had my they had they had all, you know, they had water. They had everything supplied to them. God brought them food. Well, what makes us think that God was going to, is going to treat us any different than that? You know, sometimes we, we, we think we got such a high-tech world around here that we can handle things without God. I'm here to tell you, without God, you don't have a chance. You do not have a chance without God. He has to be a vital part of your life every day. And we we need to to uh, to walk in the in the God kind of faith. It doesn't matter what it is. And I, I'm, I'm telling you that there's been times in my life I've seen some incredible miracles. I mean some incredible miracles that, that God has done. And seeing that stuff, I haven't seen that lately. But I, I'm not speaking... I'm not speaking doubt, I'm just telling you the truth. But it ain't God's fault. It's my fault. Because I have I have allowed at times for fear to come in. So we cannot let fear come into our life for any reason. We can't allow it to come in and grip our heart. Because God will take care of us if we stand on His Word and believe in Him and Him alone. He's the only one that can protect us from all this stuff. He's the only one that can feed us when there's no food in this country. 
He's the only one that can bring water to us in a desert when nothing else is growing. He's the only one that can do all that stuff. He's God. Yes. He's God. And He'll take care of us. It doesn't matter what it looks around you. He'll take care of us. Why? Because He loves us. We're His kids. You know, as we're growing up, when we're little kids, I mean, the parents, most parents will spoil their first kid and give them just about anything they want. But as that kid starts growing up, we start expecting them to take some responsibility for what they're doing. We expect them to, to make some changes. Well, God is not different. We, we get born again. We we uh, we're all kind of like a honeymoon thing at first, you know. We have just about anything you pray for when you first get saved. I, I mean, it happened to me. I mean, God was just doing all kinds of stuff, mm -hmm. teaching me about about tithing and teaching me about different things. And I, you know, just whatever I asked Him for, He just give it to me, you know. But now I have to, he's, he's, it's like a muscle. Mm -hmm. You wouldn't give a, a, a kid a hundred pound barbell to start him out on. He wouldn't, uh, he wouldn't be able to lift it. And he'd get discouraged. Mm -hmm. So he gives him a little bit. And that strength gets there and gets a little better and a little better. After a while he can lift that hundred pounds. And that's the way God does us. It, faith is kind of like a muscle. If you don't use it, you lose it. And so, we build our faith, and God at times brings stuff into our life to cause us to pray. Amen. It's true. He'll bring that stuff into our life to cause us to pray, to bring us to that place where we God, I don't know what to do. You're the only one that can do anything. <clears throat> and God wants us. God wants us to to uh, stay in that place of prayer and faith, trusting Him for everything. He wants us to trust Him for everything. You know why? Because we're not in control. He's in control. God is God is in control of everything. And the more we realize that, the more we we rest in that, the more peace we're going to have. We're not going to have peace if we're trusting in our own abilities to solve a problem all the time. Even, even the jobs that we have, you know. God gives doctors incredible uh, ways to, to heal people, you know. God gives engineers ways to figure things out. <coughs> but we have to give God the credit for it. You know, when people get into pride and they start taking it, taking it, uh, taking it like, well, it's, it's all them that it's, it's because I went to college all these years. <laughs> no, there. If you don't trust in God, then you don't really have much. But, amen. Mm -hmm. I got one more scripture.
Romans 10, 17. So then faith comes by hearing, and hearing by the Word of God. You know, this, this is, uh, this is a thing I, I read a scripture one time. It says, These signs shall follow them that believe. They'll lay hands on the sick, and they'll recover. Mm -hmm. I had never prayed for anybody in my life to, for, for healing at that time. But I heard about somebody that needed prayer. And I prayed for them. God showed up in a tremendous way. We read, we read the scriptures, but we really, at times, don't believe it. I heard a story about an evangelist one time that his wife said. He was in there studying. He was going to preach somewhere. His wife come running in the house. She says, "You got to come outside. There's a million bees out here." He told his wife, "He said, I'm not going outside. There's a million bees out there." And finally, she convinced him to go outside, and he saw about three or four bees. And he got to thinking about that. You know, if you got somebody in your life that said, I'll never leave you or forsake you, that's what Jesus said, isn't it? But see, Jesus meant it. It's all conditional on some people. It's all conditional how you treat me or whatever. All conditional shouldn't be that way, but it is a lot of times. We have to allow God to change those things in us so that we can walk in a kind of faith that's going to change things. Yeah. It's like changing, changing the atmosphere of a place with your faith. We can change the things around us by the words that we speak. Yeah. We always do. We can change them. Uh, if it's negative, we can change it into a, a real bad situation. But if it's positive, it's, if it's God's word in faith, then we change it to a positive. Mm -hmm. God wants us to focus on that. Yes. Take those thoughts captive. Don't allow fear to come in. God is on your side. If God is on your side, who can be against you? That's right. Nobody can come against God. And He's on our It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter how many uh, Muslims are in the world. It doesn't. I mean, it doesn't matter how many of those radicals that are out there. Listen, God can take care of them in a heartbeat, just like that. Mm -hmm. He can turn them all into blood-washed, born-again Christians. Amen. Overnight. That'd be cool. It's happened before. Whole nations have been changed in a day. God can do it. We can't do it. But we can pray, and God can do it. Amen. Amen. We don't. We don't have to live. We don't have to live substandard. We can walk in faith, and I believe that. I believe that. You know, we so so soon we forget when we pray. You know, we. You know, like the scripture, David 
David reminded himself of how the, the bear and the lion, he encouraged himself with, with what had already happened in his life. That's how he defeated Goliath. Because he knew from experience that God was going to take care of it. I've got many experiences in my life, and I'm sure y'all do too, how God has come through for you when it didn't seem possible that it was going to happen. He's not going to change that. He's going to still come through for you. He's not going to let you fall. He started the good work in you, and He's going to complete it. Amen. Isn't that what the Word said? Amen. If He started good work in you and He's going to complete it, He means just that. Amen? Amen. Good. Well, that's about all i got to say today. That's good. Praise God. Praise the Lord, yes.